Hello everyone and welcome to Mike Dies Repeatedly at Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. In today's episode, uh, Mike has been uh, making a valiant effort to, um, to to push out our borders. Uh, so in, in, at the end of the previous one, I think, and I'm, I'm just going to check this. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we had a border across... Did we, no, I think we had... Actually, our wall, I think, was across here. So, in the last stream, Mike has actually done a lot of fighting. So, I, um, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit snarky about the number of times he died. But also, I'm going to be, be um, also quite congratulatory because he has done... He's cleared out a lot of area. So, before... The last stream, we had a wall across there, you can just about see. And there was a little wall across there. Since, the, uh, since in the last stream, uh, Mike has now cleared out this entire area around here. Um... And put in a wall across the bottom of here, a wall across the top here. Um, probably not that. That one was probably already there. Um, with the reason, the reasoning behind this is because we've always been a bit short of stone. So if we look over here in the um, in the stone area, you can see this station is woefully empty. We've got a little trickle coming through from the core mining, which is nice, but it's not an enormous amount. So that's been yeah, that's trickling around here. We're we're, we're we just don't have any coming in. Well, hardly any coming in by train because we have a. We, we do have, a, yes, we have a, a small stone mine over here, which is currently loading up its train. Um, but it's taking, as you can see, it's taking a long time to pr actually produce enough. It's quite a slow mine. And we don't, and it's only, there's only 733,000 there. So, when I was poking around between episodes, I found, discovered that there's um, these two nice ore patches, out, stone patches out here. There's five and a, half, five and a bit million there, four and a half million there. So, all, that's almost 10 million between them, and that's a lot of stone. So there's been this big push to get out, out out into this area and and make this area safe enough that we can start mining these um these stone patches. So if you look at the you look at the geography, it's actually not too bad an area. So we, we've got that wall going across there, um, and we could possibly have had kept the one in there and put one in there, which might have been slightly less wall, but going across there is a little bit neater. It, it means we can go around the top a bit more easily, and that's often can be useful. We can then stick in, or if we stick in a wall across here and either one over, either across here or here and here, we can then liberate this entire peninsula. Is it, can I call it a peninsula? It's an air, a big area of land anyway, and this is going to be fantastic for future. For, but partly because it gets it'll get us this stone, and far, partly because it'll get us a load of extra building room later for things like this um, low density structures town. We're going to need. A, I, I said in the last video we're going to need a um, heat shield tile one at some point. There's probably going to be more stuff that we end up wanting to build out into towns in in the future. We also gained some other resources, so there's um, a nice copper ore patch of 3.5 million there and 2 million there and a load more up here. And the rate we're getting through copper as well, as, as we've discussed, that could be quite useful. There's some uranium in here as well and a little bit more there. So and quite a lot of oil. Those, those are the patches that I talked about Tristan having um, put mines in on in, in, the, uh, in the last video. Um, that, was, that was liberated by uh, Mike's big push. So there's still a lot of work to do here. He might need another stream of going around shooting things um, because at the very least these these all these bites around here need to be taken out and probably all the way up and all these ones up to here. But he's getting better at it. He's going he's been going around with the railgun blasting through and the railgun is amazing. You can you can sort of almost, you watch it from the map view and you can just see a sort of an entire row of the red biter nests disappear in one go each time it fires. It's phenomenal. Um, and now that we've got laser turrets as well, they can build up little pillboxes like this. And these are much quicker and easier to build than the uh, than the bullet-based ones because they don't require any um, they don't require any ammunition. You just drop in a pylon, a substation, and boom, a load of turrets, and they're all ready to go immediately. And ideally, a wall around them to, to protect them. They don't do quite. I think they don't do quite as much damage as the bullet turrets. Let's see if I can citation need myself on that. So we've got damage is 30 plus 21 laser. If I find a bullet turret. These are all laser turrets. Uh, if I find a bullet turret, these are... Oh, 10 plus 15. But the shooting speed is 10 per second. Um, plus 100 times 125 percent, maybe. So that's a shooting speed of 10 per second, may, maybe more. Give uh, Plus a 25 damage is um, going to be at least 250 damage per second. The laser turrets are have a shooting speed of 2, but do... 50 per, se 50 per shot, so it's 100 per second. So I was right. The laser turrets do cause less damage. However, they don't require they don't require ammunition. All they use to fire is power, and that's free. However, however, if we do need if we didn't need more damage, we could start putting red ammunition into the turrets because these turrets are still only taking yellow ammunition, and we can make red ammunition at this point. So that would be a significant upgrade. Let's see if I can tell how much. Um, yes, yeah, so we go from 16 to. 
22 and a half. So you get a decent bump of, of damage from upgrading those if, if we needed it. But the thing is, we haven't needed it. But on the yeah, as I say, the, the big thing is that these use um, these use le these use nothing that costs any any uh, resources. They use this use power. And as we've covered in the past with the with these systems, power is completely free. We're, these are essentially complicated solar power generators. We're growing wood. We're turning it into gases. We're burning the gas, and that produces electricity more than, and far more than is used to grow the wood. So we don't need we don't. So given that we have free power, these are freer to use and as i say they're, they're quicker and simpler to drop in as long as you've got a, a, a nice long system of power poles running out to wherever you try to put one in and we basically do so this is pre this is pretty good so yes um as i say mike has been uh, liberating this area because we want these, these these this 10 million stone out here so once that once this area has been claimed we can whack in the stone mine we can use those shiny new uh, mining drill mark twos that i was talking about in the uh, in the last video <laughs> get that out a bit quicker shove it into trains it's quite a long way so we may need to start considering longer trains or maybe we'll just have more trains running e either works fine it doesn't it'll, it'll, it'll be fine either way as long as as long as you rem remember to put in some balancers it'll, it'll be great um it might even be worth since these patches are relatively close together we may even just feed the belts in and put it all into one central uh, one single central train with a massive um stacker on the input so we can have about four trains waiting fill them all up as quickly as possible and send them on their way we shall see. That's um, probably going to be a Tristan decision, or maybe a Mike decision, depending on who, depending on who actually gets out and building this. Oh, there's another six million stone up here. I hadn't even seen that one. So we've got like 15, 16 million stone in this in this area alone, and some incredibly valuable mineral water. <coughs> yes. <laughs> um, in case you don't, haven't been watching enough to get the joke, mineral water is completely worthless because we're currently not using it at all. But we are generating quite a lot of it with the core mining. So at the moment, it's all just being pumped down into the station here and then blown out into the atmosphere. So presumably this is vaporizing into very small droplets and blowing it out into the air. And Yeah, I don't know. But there, we, we have more mineral water than we know what to do with. So we've collected up a station's worth and we're just dumping the rest of it. So, yeah. I, yeah, I suspect we probably won't ever use this mineral water patch, but you never know. And I know it's used for lithium later, but we'll um, we'll see if we actually need that. So yes, as I say, Mike has been doing lots of combat, and as you can tell by all of these skulls around here, he's also been dying quite a lot in the process. Now, he has been blaming a lot of that on lag. Apparently, somebody else in his house was downloading half of Netflix while he was trying to play, so that caused him to have a few, a few points where he'd be merrily trying to run away there'd be a brief, brief pause and then he'd be dead and he'd scream lag into the microphone quite loudly so that's his excuse how accurate that is well who knows maybe it's just karma from putting uh, uranium into people's inventories in the last uh, in the last session <laughs> although actually if we, we um csi factorio did happen a bit during the last week and i think it was determined that um mike is not actually guilty of murder he was guilty of attempted murder when he put some in my inventory and actual bodily harm because I did lose some health to it. Um, but I was able to drop it on the floor before I, before I actually died. And we're pretty sure that Mark's death to uranium poisoning um, was due to a uh, meteorite getting automatically marked for deconstruction and then him flying over by it. So his bots picked up the uh, everything from it and put it into his inventory. So, Mike, you're kind of off the, um, off the hook for now, but careful, we're watching you. <clears throat> now Tristan did say that he saw he uh, he was horrified by Mike's northern wall. Um, I think that must be this one up here. But he went in and did some did some fixing on it. So at this point, I'm not quite sure exactly what was wrong with it. I do remember it being observed that there's a lot more ammunition here than is needed because he didn't put the filtered uh, splitters in at the ends here to, to to not send it back round again. So there's a lot of extra waste ammunition, and also it's a bit weird that. It's, this is one loop like this, so we're taking the ammunition along this side and bringing it back up this side. Yeah, that's that's kind of ugly. It's a waste, it's a waste of a lot of ammunition. I mean, okay, ammunition's not that expensive, but still, it, it is a bit wasteful. But Tristan has gone in and apparently removed the worst excesses, which might mean he put in this splitter here and made the ammunition go straight across there by preference. <laughs> I'm not sure, and prioritised it here. But I did notice, if you look at the production graphs, if we go in here and look look for magazines, and we go over over the last, all last actually look over all time, we can see rifle magazines, we've made 70,000 of them, and we've used 10,000 of them. So that means six in every seven rifle magazines we've made are sitting somewhere in the factory, whether that's on belts like this, possibly the ones in the guns, yeah, the ones in the guns will, will count as not having been used yet. 
the ones in the uh, the, the, the train, the the, the, um, the ammo train down here. Well, there isn't an ammo train down here, but the, the, the ammo train, these chests, all of this belt. Yeah, they'll also count towards the um, towards that that sixty thousand of unused ammunition. But having six six sevenths of the ammunition we've made just sitting unused, <clears throat> it feels slightly excessive. But you'll notice, actually, interestingly, when this train pulls in here. We've not had to load. Actually, we've not loaded or unloaded anything, so I'm not sure why it went to wherever it went to. There might be a bug in the in, in the system there. Let's see if this. Um, when the when the five seconds of inactivity happens, we'll be able to. In fact, let's let's rotate. It can be rotated. Cannot. What? Oh, there we go. Right now, let's see see where this train goes because I suspect it's going somewhere it shouldn't because it didn't do any loading or unloading of its inventory when it um, when it got back. So down there, there might be a problem. There is a problem. That's purple, so that should be. Huh? T great. Hmm. Let's go. Let's have a quick look at that station because there's something seems to be going fun going on here that is that shouldn't be. So it was this this one down here. Now that's purple. That's supposed to mean train limit is zero, I think. But if we look at this, we've got. Oh no, we do have. We've got too many um, filter inserters here. So, uh, fil no, we've got too many filtered. Um, we've got too many uh, dirty filters and not enough clean filters okay that was a perfectly legitimate re request for a train so maybe there isn't a pro maybe there isn't actually a problem maybe this is absolutely fine and I'm, I'm worrying about things I don't need to um, back to Mike's ugly wall um, it seems to be seems to be okay the f there aren't enough filters on it yet but that's okay because there won't be very much there won't be any pollution up here yet so now this is that this wall does seem to be okay i think we may we may have well have the tristan to thank for that maybe he'll let us know in the comments what was so bad about mike's wall <laughs> so that covers everything that mike's been up to next we move on to mark who's um because because he's been doing uh, because mike was doing most of the fighting out there um, other people have been getting on with a lot of work so actually before i do talk to talk about uh, mark we will say that uh, the reason the reason we're still using um, antiquated technology over here is because the smeltery is kind of it's sort of mike's responsibility with responsibility being in very very heavy inverted commas because we definitely will have other people playing with it and messing around with it and doing, doing things around here as as and when necessary but he's built it all up so far <clears throat> so we've sort of been leaving it to leaving him to it but that means because he was off doing combat for the entire uh, last stream he didn't come in he didn't do any upgrading over here which is why we're still short of steel but you know you can't we, he, we can't expect him to do absolutely everything well maybe we can but it's not but he probably won't be able to so now on to Mark. Mark has put in an extra row of um, free power along here. Um, apparently, this was at least partly to to absorb the extra pollution that's being generated by presumably by the uh, the steam battery down here. And I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it seems to be the only thing around here that could be. Um, so he wanted to absorb some of that pollution. So he's done he's done that um, because each of these is slightly net pollution negative as in it removes more pollution from the atmosphere than it releases. <clears throat> because if I remember correctly, the numbers are that these these air purifiers remove exactly the same amount of pollution as is generated by these gas power stations so the little extra bit of pollution that's removed by these um uh what do you call them it's um greenhouses around the edge is 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 your bonus so that's that's free pollution clearing which is why we've not had any pollution leaking out of the of the of this area apart from that over there i'm not quite sure where that came from um so that's yeah that's pretty good and also, if these things aren't running at full whack, as you can see, this is only running at about half whack at the moment, then these these uh, filters are still running at full full whack, full 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 power, full steam ahead. Um, so they're they're they are removing more pollution at the moment than, than is being generated by these because these aren't running at full power. So yeah, these are the more of these you have, the cleaner everything gets. So that that's good. Um, and yeah, that's that's quite nice. And it means we've got more power available. So if I find a pylon to click on. Um, that's actually connected to everything like this one you'll see that we're currently running at about I'm gonna ballpark that's at about half power it's a bit less than half we're, um, yeah we've got half and then a couple of extra a couple of extra hundred megawatts on the top so we've got we've got plenty of power at the moment which is good because we do have a lot of core miners around uh, drilling and using up quite a lot of that power um, now interestingly Mike's expansion isn't going to get us any more uh, core seams unless we go out and get this one which we I mean, we could. It's not. It's not actually defended by biters, so that is, is grabbable. And there's one down there that's um, not not liberated. There's one down there that's yeah, effectively we can get that one because it's on an island. Um, but yeah, you see, there's there's we we've got all the ones inside our walls now, as I said in the last video. But there's still a few more that are um, at a nearby and therefore tempting. 
Mark's big thing this in the last one was, was making a, a uranium processing town here. So we've got trains here that will bring in uranium. So we've got a uranium mine somewhere. Here it is. Uranium mine here that's digging it up uh, nice and quick. Loading it up here. And for some reason, there isn't a train carrying it around. Maybe it's this one. Nope. Why is there no train handling this station? What do you do? Oh, it's, man it's been manually stopped. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know why it's been manually stopped. Um, I was also looking at slightly the wrong, slightly the wrong place. Oh, maybe it's uh, this one. This one has priority. No, that doesn't work. I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know why. But let's find it. Where is it? Yeah, it is here. It's been manually stopped somewhere, and so this has all gone to sleep. But what this does mean is that every so often we'll get a, a supply of uranium dropped off here. It goes into it goes into all of these centrifuges. We've got four rows of them, as you can see, which is. I don't. I, I haven't had, had any consideration as to how the balancing works here, but I know that these 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 run and they work because we've got some we've got some products coming out down here. And so, when you um, when you do this, when you when you centrifuge your, your 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 uranium, you get out some uranium, some processed uranium. You get the uh, the two three five. You get a bit of two three eight. Well, you get a lot of two three eight. You get a little bit of two three five. You also get a chance of iron ore and stone, which is interesting. But that's not too difficult to deal with because we can we can just we can have the splitters down here. We've just got a belt taking it away. Simple. You take it out here. You dump it out. You've got uh, flowing into here. We've got um, we've got 97 uranium 238 so far plus whatever's in the station. So we've made about 6,300 uranium 238. We've made a whole whopping great 33 uranium 235. And here we go. This is the other way you can do your uh, your filtering. So this is this is now waiting in the the in, the loaders aren't able to pass out into these to pass these belts because these belts are stopped at the moment because there is less than 100 in the warehouse so when there is more than 100 in the warehouse we can export the 16 or no the 32 onto the onto the out, out through through all of these that will then flow out through the through all these belts and go out into the warehouses but until we've got at least 100 in here these won't work and that's working on the um on the balancing problems that i was talking about in the last video um, I, so i have now finally found somewhere where this is in use <laughs> and then down here we've got the standard things with uh, iron ore and stone and these when they fill up the trains the stations will flick over to say they're ready this is the it works in exactly the same way that every other station does that i've told you about it divides it by eight, everything by eight thousand if there's more than eight thousand of anything then it puts an l out on here um great you've got if it's, so well, actually, no, this is a simpler one if there's more than eight thousand of anything it outputs one l and therefore this then goes to a train limit of one and a train can come out and grab it so it's eventually, this will also be linked onto the um, the circuit network, probably, and therefore, and these will then be set as high priority stations. So if there's anything available, if these stations have stuff available, then the the trains will come here to get the resources rather than going to the uh, the mines. But we can actually do that by having any trains that are running to here, um, being set to the high priority side of the, um, of the of the stone system or the iron ore systems, which we haven't really started using yet, but we probably will at some point. So these need to be these these need to be prioritised properly. But that's uranium processing. And with Crestorio, you get some other free resources, which is lovely. So you get about about one extra, well, slightly less than one extra resource per process, yeah, which is nice because it takes 10 uranium ores on the input to process it. Although I think that might be also, also be vanilla. I can't remember. Mark also spent some time assisting um, Tristan and uh, Mike with the, presumably with the fighting over here and just sort of helping clear, clear out the biters and the worms and things from this area. So that's... Um, Helping there, very good. Quick defense surveillance, surveillance wall, right? Yeah. So he's put in. That's presumably this wall across here, which has laser turrets. It's quick and dirty because it's got power, power fed in, laser turrets across here, a basic bit of wall. The main point of this is that if the biters come over here and start chewing their way through, we'll know about it. When we've got radars in along here as well, it's going to um, give us. This gives us the radar coverage. It gives us a bit of warning if the biters start coming through this way. But basically, it's not really expected to do serious defenses because there's only one laser turret. And any, any, well, actually, anywhere a biter attacks, there'll be two laser turrets attacking it. But that's not very many, so it's just a sort of a, it's, it's, it's an early warning system rather than a proper defensive wall. That'll probably get upgraded at some point in the future. He put in the umbrella defense. I mentioned this in the last video, but that's up, that's up here, um, running off all three networks. And I, I discussed the, um, the possible concer concerns about that. But we'll, uh, we'll discuss that and decide whether we want to change it in the next stream. So make sure you come along to that at, um, at half seven and uh, to, uh, to, to. Um, yeah, to see uh, to see what we decide to, to, is the best thing to do about this on uh, half seven on Monday. That is, uh, he's he's gone in and upgraded the um, the core drop off station. So down here, yes, all of this is now red belt, so we can get the stuff. The uh, the core fragments can come through a bit more quickly because oh, it's interesting. We're getting destination full, so we've actually caught up. That that's surprising. Um, normally these trains are 
working a little bit harder than this, but it looks like we've finally got enough. But this should... Oh, there it goes. There wasn't very much of a gap there. <laughs> so now we can have a second train pull in, and oh, that has just emptied. But now, because we've got the red belts going up here, we've got a little bit of extra throughput. And so that might mean... No, we've got more belts coming off the top here than we have um, going into it. So we're never... With this system, unless we, unless we have more trains, more feed, feed through, and more faster unloading, we're never going to be able to get a, quite a constant flow going into the um, in, into the uh, crushers. But that said, <clears throat> there is enough that we aren't actually running out. It's just that these ones at the top seem to be not working quite as hard as the ones at the bottom. I think one thing I'd quite like to do is come along and put productivity modules in all of these because they are just free resources. And if we need more of more of these machines, we can just put in more of these machines. And they're not running at absolutely 100% capacity at the moment. So I think it's, it's, it's basically a no-brainer. We might as well shove in more productivity modules. And you can get four of them in each of these. So that's going to get us a boost of 24%, so an extra quarter of everything. I think I think that's worth having. So um, even if it means we need another couple of rows of, um, of pulverizers over here. So that, in, if, based on that, I should probably see how, how fast we're getting on with the, making these... these uh, Things. So we've got 112 of them at the moment, um, and it has stopped. Presumably, is that it's due to a shortage of input? We've run it because we've run out of green circuits. How come we've run out of green circuits? Tristan, have you broken things again? Um, now, oh, presumably, I, I, I suspect what's happened. Oh, no, my suspicions were inaccurate. Where's the green circuit drop? Here. We've run out of green circuits here. Why is there, is there no? Standing at green circuit pickup, okay. Why are you just standing at green circuit pickup? The destinations. If you're trying to go to green circuit drop, okay. You've got a, we've got a full train there, but the green circuit drop over here is not requesting it. Is it you? Yes, it is you. It's not requesting a train because reasons. Um, so we've got nothing coming out of here. We've got oh, it's. It's dividing the number of green. Ah, it's because this is this is this is this is says bricks. So if we switch this over to say green circuits, uh, thirty-two thousand, because that's what we want to have. Then, the tra yeah, then the train sets off. Okay, so that's that's fixed. There was just a, a, a glitch in there. I was actually expecting that to be the problem where we have um, a a box like there isn't. Okay, there isn't one for green circuits, but a box where yeah, there is. Here it is. A box like this where this is not being fed through and there's there's too much in. Um, in the logistics network, but it appears not. It was a different problem. And Mark has also had to, um, fin finally on, on his list, Mark has also had to extend the uh, the plastic pickup station over here because the train suddenly got longer, <laughs> in his words. <laughs> Which is, is fair. We started using the 1212 train, so that means you now need a, um, you now need four warehouses. But he'd already extended the uh, the plastic production in the last, in the last, um, stream or last session so we now had plenty we have plenty of plastic available here we just need to make sure the train's capable of picking it up and carrying it around so that's uh, yeah things seem to be going pretty well let's have a quick look at the death counters so mike managed to gain a st an astonishing 10 more deaths in uh, liberating this area so well done there um your your repeated deaths won't go won't won't go in vain i can assure you <laughs> 10, that's quite a lot. That brings him up to a grand total of 23. That's almost five times, it's almost the square of the nearest um, nearest, uh, nearest follower. And two of those are from worms, six from biters, two from spitters. So that makes a certain amount of sense given his uh, cries of lag. That suggests that he was trying to run away from the biters, suddenly wasn't able to, and then got savaged. <laughs> We're still on one one death from trains and one death from radiation, uh, which we can now say was not murder, um, because we because um, Mark played uh, played CSI Factorio and discovered the actual cause of it. <laughs> so that brings us on to next time. What are we going to be doing next time? Well, um, what can, what do we have a, we, the to do list is mostly cleaned out now because a lot of the to do, to -do list was um, was tidy was lots of tidying up and bringing this, the base up to doing the things that we want, uh, do, do, doing the things that it's doing but better. So the next, next obvious next thing to do is going to be to go to space. So that's going to need rocket fuel being to be liquefied and brought into here, so we can actually launch the rocket. We're going to need to decide what we want to take up with us to space. And we've discovered now with um, space exploration 0.6, things have got a little bit cruel. So in in the past, I was I was making enormous quantities of space transport belts, space scaffolding, space blooming everything down on Norvis, loading them all into the um, into the spaceship to take up there because I knew I was going to need them in massive, massive quantities. And the resources are all there on Norvis, so it's easier. Now, you can only build space transport belts in a space assembling machine, which can only be built in space, or a space manufacturer, which can also only be built in space. So, we're going to have to go to space 
and essentially have another sort of almost start the burner stage all over again with hand feeding and moving stuff around between uh, machines manually because we won't have any we won't have space transport belts we won't have space scaffolding i don't think that's this one platform scaffold no again that's only can only be made in space we haven't even researched it yet actually so we ooh space platform scaffold requires space science packs so we're going to have to go up to that big asteroid in space and try and build and build something there that will make the space science without spreading out off the asteroid. Now, I think that's going to be pretty easy because we, if we look at Norvis Orbit, that's a pretty chunky asteroid. And if we get really desperate, we can pull up the um, the extra bits of scaffold and platform from here and, and reuse them somewhere more more useful. But still, that's... Um, yeah, that's that's interesting that you have you, you can't just go up there and build arbitrarily big. So we can... But on the flip side, there is also a lot of this uh, deep space transport belt that we can use in the in the meantime to get to get the space uh, stuff up and running. We've got some barrels of liquids. We've got some oh, there's some more um, space platform and scaffold in there. More solar panels, even more um, deep space transport belts. Some more guns. Some more some raw resources. So there's quite a lot of stuff generously left up here that we can go up and start playing with. So I don't expect the um, construction up here to actually be a problem. Ooh, some beryllium as well. That's brilliant. Uh, sorry but we will yeah we'll have to go up here and just clean up all of the scrap from here and then just start actually you know building things nicely and well we'll see how it um, see how it see how it goes so space science is going to i think is going to be the big exciting thing next time um ooh, we're going to have to transport a lot of science packs up to space as well that's another thing to put on the on, on the uh, to take with us to space list um, and a landing pad so future rockets don't have to crash that'd be nice too so there's that. There's a few little bits and pieces here and there that I've been pointing out as we go along. Uh, we're obviously going to want to pick up these um, stone patches over here and get those secured, as it says on the um, <laughs> on the uh, icons by them, because we're going to need we need that stone and, and probably that stone as well. Um, but other than that, I think now we can start focusing a bit more on just going up to space and doing more science up there, and that's going to be really exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to be the next big jump forward. And that's going to allow us to start doing all of these science things that we haven't been able to do before. We're going to be able to look into methane ice, water ice, vulcanite, cryonite, uh, immersium even, um, beryllium, holmium, yeah, just everything. So there's loads and loads of stuff we can play around with here. Lots and lots of um, science, science sciencey excitement. We might need to do that one fairly... Maybe not. We'll just cram it full of speed mod no productivity modules and then maybe beacons. Oh, beacons will be a thing to look into. Yeah, so there's ooh, quarry mi min quarry mineral. That's interesting. Oh, that's probably that's immersite mining. Nice. So yeah, lots of exciting stuff to get. <clears throat> but all of it is now going to be locked behind research. Maybe Mike's going to want us to make artillery. We shall see. Uh, so I don't want to say too much about what we're going to do next because I don't actually know. But there's lots of lots of things, lots of interest, lots of potential, lots of stuff to do. So I hope you'll come back on Monday to jo to uh, to watch us progress with that. Uh, we'll get yep, going up into, into into space, going out into uh, once more into the uh, the breach with the, um, the the fighting over here, and just lots more expansion because that's what this game's all about. And expanding off the planet is a pretty big one in there. So yes, that's be 7.30 UK time, Monday evening. There's going to be the Dyson Sphere program stream on Wednesday at 7.30. And tomorrow there'll be a video coming out showing my progress on the last Dyson Sphere program um, stream as well. Uh, there's also going to be a video coming out on Tuesday with a an update to my um, the, uh, the, the spaceship tutorial I did a few months ago. Because I've had a lot of feedback saying I went through it a bit too quickly. So people would like, would like a bit more detail from that. So yeah, check that one out if you want to know how to, uh, how to, how to automate your spaceships. That should be good. And I'm also planning a... Um, a secret project, which is, is going to be a, a, a it's going to be a Factorio-related race to build a rocket, but with some um, with various sort of special rules and things to make it a bit more interesting and, and challenging and interesting, but also reasonably quick. I don't expect it to take more than a couple of hours to run through, and that's open to everyone. So if you want to if you want to join in on that, come along, join the Discord, uh, ask any of the admins to uh, to add you to the group, and find out some more information about it from there. So, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. And are going to go and check out the sponsor. That's trefoil.be slash lawrenceplays. You then use the code lawrenceplays to get 20% off um, hosting services. So they're hosting um, game servers, so Factorio, Minecraft, other games besides. Run, Go along there, use my code, and they'll give you 20% off and make everybody happy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.